Um, tonight I'd like to uh, make a short video on how to calculate the heart rate from an ECG. Now the, the ECG that's in front of you is very typical. It's the sort of thing you might pick up when you go into the ward or have in your office when you're seeing a patient. And the first thing you need to determine from that is the heart rate. Um, now I might just zoom in a bit here um, and to get a little bit closer so we can get a nice QRS complex. So here we have an ECG which happens to be in sinus rhythm and it shows a series of QRS uh, complexes. Now most ECG books uh, tell you to calculate the rate by counting the number of big squares between two successive complexes. So that's from there uh, to there. So you count, first of all, the number of big squares, and by a big square I mean from there to there. That's a big square, and it's five millimeters. So there's one, two, three, four, and a bit. But we won't worry about the bit today. And your average ECG book tells you to count the number of big squares, and then you divide that number into 300. So 300 divided by, what was it, four big squares equals um, four sixes of 24, seven fours is 28, seven with two left over, 75 beats per minute. So that's that method, beats per minute. Uh, a slightly uh, more refined way of doing that is we'll just go down here is to take the number of little squares which is each one millimeter so we'll do that here so we take from that point to that point again the RR interval and count the number of little squares so each big square has five so there's five ten fifteen 20 plus one there and plus another one there approximately so that's 22 in all and so you take that number and in the same sort of manner you divide it into 1500 so um, here we have it into 1500 so if I can get my cursor in the right spot so that's 1500 Uh, divided by 22. Uh, that's a little more difficult than the sort of division we're normally used to, but if we factorize that by 2, that's 750 in divided by 11, which I think 6 11s is 66 with 9 left over, so that's 6. Uh, 11s in the 90 go eight with a little bit out of it. So that gives us a heart rate of 66 beats per minute. Now, that's probably a little bit more accurate, but it's certainly different, and at high heart rates it might be significant. So what I thought I'd do now is perhaps show you a, a more easy way, uh, which is one that I like. And for this you need to know that from one edge of the paper, which is from there to, where's the other one, to here, is 10 seconds. And so if we count the number of complexes, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there's 11 QRS complexes across the sheet. And so if we go back up here, I'll put this in, in this little spot here. There was there were eleven complexes, and because there's ten seconds across there, we multiply by six. That gives us the number of complexes in one minute, which equals sixty-six beats per minute. Now 
This last method is much quicker and easier and it takes into account the innate variability in the ECG. Now, one thing that might puzzle you in these first two methods is why divide into 300? So I just thought we'd talk about that a little bit. Heart rate is a wave and so it has a frequency and you will remember from high school physics that the frequency of a wave is equal to the reciprocal of the period. I think this is the correct symbolism for period, a little t with two dot, two little bars on either side. And so um, what to work out the frequency we need to work out the period or the time um, between two successive waves. So if we write that as equal to 1 divided by the number of big squares, which is what I'll write B as for big squares, multiplied by the time which elapses for each big square. Now how do we know that? Well when ECG machines were invented and uh, it was decided that the paper or the chart speed would be 25 millimeters per second. And so uh, each millimeter is, I'll just draw it here, divided by 25 and that gives us each little millimeter is 0 0.04 seconds. Now a big square is 5 millimeters so each big square is 0 0.2 zero seconds. So into this formula here we write frequency is 1 over the period which is the number of big squares multiplied by 0 0.2 seconds and that will give us a frequency in beats per second which is not what we want, we want it in beats per minute. Beats per second is pretty unmanageable so we need to um, multiply this whole thing by 60 and that will give us beats per minute and if you simplify that that equals 600 divided by big squares multiplied by 2 which is the same as 300 over big squares which is how that first formula was worked out but as you will see it only gives us the instantaneous rate for one beat and in many conditions in cardiology and general medicine the uh, heart rate is variable and so the method whereby we count the a number of complexes over 10 seconds and then multiply by 60 gives us a much better average of the heart rate and takes into account this innate uh, variability and also the variability which we from time to time get from arrhythmias. Thank you.